So you'll notice too on the reference that the light is hitting across the T section and in the nose and spreading across the cheeks. Also, I've chosen this um, image because it is a little bit blurry as I went to um, enlarge it. I wanted to show you how to work with an image that gets a little blurry because sometimes you don't have control over the image that you're given. Sometimes you have an image given by a family member or they say, please choose one on Facebook, especially if you're doing a posthumous portrait. When that person has passed on, you can only use the photos that you already have of them. And a lot of times the, the expression that you want might be in a photo that isn't the greatest. So I wanted to show you how I work around some of those issues. So the first issue with this photograph is it's a tiny bit blurry when we blow it up. And that's not gonna be a problem. I'll show you where I uh, make those changes. The most important thing is that I can see the sclera. I can see the white of the eyes really well still. And so that that is kind of our signpost or the signpost that I use. The second thing that I want to talk to you about is you can notice that that he has that light is really across that nose and um, cheeks and a little bit on that T, just a little bit into the forehead. I am going to put a little bit more light in the forehead than what is shown in the photo. And the reason for this is that um, I want that nice spread of light across the face. And I have enough reference photos of this child to be able to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more light than what you actually see in the reference photo up in his forehead. I love the reason I chose this photo is I love that soft expression that he has. And I love that if you can see on my my charcoal pencil, you can see that the light is here and rounds down around the forms on both areas really nicely, beautifully. And as it comes here, it rounds down into the chin area, uh, drops off into the chin area beautifully and drops off uh going across the form up into the skull really nicely. You can see there's a little bit of highlight right here and a little bit of light as it comes down. And again, I'll increase that just a tiny bit. Anyway, here, so we have our ghost image and I'm gonna go ahead and start with the, the area of completion. I'm gonna go ahead and start in the forehead and then down into the eye area, I'm putting just a little bit more charcoal soft again we're working with our soft willow charcoal down in the forehead we look at planes of the the forehead those planes are not set yet because this is a child but we still have distinct distinct frontal plate and a distinct area here that is going more into shadow and then on this side that's going deeper into shadow and so I want to make sure that I do have a very slight delineation between those. I'll go ahead and get that hair just a little bit darker. As I'm looking at this, I want to just go ahead and quickly put in my darkest dark. I see a few areas of, of nice darks, but I think I'll just refine it down to this area is our darkest dark. Play around with that shape in a second, probably goes up a little bit more. The reason I'm establishing that darkest dark is to um, be able to judge all of my other values off of that dark that I'm putting in there. Got some lovely dark right here on the top, the hairline, just gonna run a plumb line. This is about where that, that iris is. Let's say there's some lovely dark right there. And then the other darkest dark would be um, in that eye. And I'll put that in all together with the rest of his 
his eye. I think I've got a decent amount of charcoal in here now in order to um, kind of be able to work into it. So we're going to go ahead and at this point, I'm going to switch into my harder charcoal into that vine. Just this uh, back charcoal is getting really distracting. So I'm going to go ahead and just knock it down. Just did a light blow to get the charcoal that kind of missed it down onto the rest of the drawing, get it off. Okay. It's not obviously the finished hair, but it's a lot less distracting for me. So that's why that had to kind of go. One of the important things about um, the expression in this um, little boy's face is the uh, that triangle area right here that kind of lifts the brow a little bit, gives that 
beautiful little innocent look. I want to make sure I keep that. And I'm mindful of that shape. It will change his expression quite a bit if I don't have that shape in there. Either way, I've got my charcoal going across the paper right now in the direction of um, those forms. That forehead plate right here, and then slightly shifting the charcoal for this part right here, and slightly shifting it for that part there. And I can see as I've gotten that shape in there that the charcoal is a little bit dark. We'll pull that out in just a second. I want to get the rest of this kind of in there.
Having the image um, be blurry is a little bit of an advantage at the early stages uh, because it helps you to keep things nice and soft. Make sure that you're really looking at those values as they warm round around each of the features. But beyond that, it is not an advantage, but I'll show you how to uh, work through it. You can see the value dips a little bit in that nose as it comes through. That's what I'm talking about as that structure is still morphing and changing as that little one is, is growing. I'm going to make sure that we pay special attention to the values in those areas um, to make sure that we're, we're really getting that feel of the facial plane, the facial uh, bones not being uh, completely in their adult places, et cetera.